Recall from Unit 5 uh, that we said the energy of a spring is one half kx squared. So if we plot that on a graph uh, where we have x and the spring energy, you know, we see that we'll get a parabola. It looks something like that. Okay. Now we also remember from unit six that the force is minus the change in ener energy, potential energy with respect to x. So in the case of the spring force, it's minus d dx, one half kx squared, which is just minus kx. So the spring force we can write as minus kx. So let's take a look at this potential graph now. So we know, again, in the case where x is less than 0, we see that at all times the spring force um, is greater than 0, which means it's repulsive. So the force, in other words, if a particle is located at this point, um, you know, at, at say minus 10, then we know that there's going to be a force pushing it to the right. But then we also know that if it's positive, we see that we always have a positive slope. Um, and so since dv dx is greater than zero, that means the spring force is less than zero, which means now if we're located at any point um, on the positive x-axis, now the force is going to push us to the left um, and so it's an attractive force, right? And so it's always trying to push us back to this point right here. This is the point, you know, this is our, uh, our equilibrium point, right? That's the whole, that's the whole point of this here is that this is an equilibrium. And not only is it an equilibrium, it's a stable equilibrium. Uh, and we know that because if I move it just a little bit, it's going to come back to this point in either direction. Um, and so it's for this reason um, that we call um, oscillating forces uh, a restoring force. Because we say that if we move it just a little bit from our position, it's going to push us back to where we were, um, no matter what direction I move in. Um, and just the further I push it away, the more it's going to push it, you know, the stronger the force pushing it back is. Um, you know, and of course we see that the force is linear with respect to x. Um, so any, and, and so, but the reason that I, I call Fs repulsive here, whereas, you know, I, I just said it's kind of pushing us to this point, is because on a real graph, this is just a, this is just a section of it. You know, we saw earlier that we'll have, you know, a realistic graph for a chemical bond would be something like this. So in this case, you know, the part of the graph that we've drawn there would be like this part right here. And so it's only it's only in this small region here um, that this acts like that this actually acts like a spring force. It acts like a restoring force. But you may remember back when we first talked about these in terms of energy, the reason that we you know even though springs aren't as common, the reason we talk about um, spring forces is because you know chemical bonds as we've already seen um, and uh, you know and really um, quantum field theory so just the way that um, tiny you know infinitesimally small uh, particles interact also seem to uh, to interact using a similar type of restoring or um, oscillating force so this is really at the at the very you know deepest parts of fundamental physics um, we say we see this this type of energy uh, and these types of forces. Um, so that's why we're going to take another uh, chapter here to explore these, uh, these applications.